Hello, how's everyone today? I'm in the process of planning a photography trip to Alaska to photograph wildlife and landscapes. I'm not only going to be photographing in Alaska, I'm also going to be making stops along the way to photograph at other locations. I just finished reviewing a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber Jeffrey Tadlock's webinar on photography trip planning to see if there were any ideas for how to update my process. So I'll provide a link of that below. Very well done, Jeffrey. Jeffrey's process is mainly focused at a, uh, let's say, a single location photography trip, where on my trip I'll be making multiple location stops along the way, and the duration's a little bit longer as well. So I wanted to share with you how I go about planning my long duration trips and multiple location trips for your information as well as I welcome any feedback from any of you viewers that are perhaps along the way that I'm traveling and could suggest areas or have traveled like this before and have further suggestions for me. So I've been lucky enough to travel to Alaska twice before. The first time was really not a photography trip. It was more of a bucket list trip where I took a motorcycle with a friend of mine and we rode from Southern California up to Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. And then spent another uh, couple weeks in Alaska uh, riding around and seeing a few sites there. Again, it was mainly for travel photography and the experience. The second trip, I drove my car from Indiana up to Alaska, stopped at a few national parks along the way, but it was mainly focused on photography, hiking, and uh, enjoying the outdoors. I've also had other multiple day trips, um, say through the Tetons, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, Yosemite, Death Valley. So I've got quite a bit of experience in planning these multiple uh, location trips, multiple day trips. So uh, let me share with you my process and uh, also what my current plans are. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is determine your destination. Then I map out my initial uh, start and destination points in Google Maps and look at different optional routes along the way. To do that, I look at the different potential stops that I would have the, along the way and see which ones may be of interest to me. I keep my map and my route updated as I make these changes. I also keep a spreadsheet with my itinerary on it. So let's take a look at what I've mapped out so far. So I started with my final destination, and I've just put in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska uh, to cover the full route from Indiana up to Alaska. Then I start looking at things along my route and different locations that I may want to stop at. And I notice along the route that uh, Badlands National Park in South Dakota is a location that I haven't been to before, and I wanted to stop and photograph there. So I simply add another destination, and I've already got it mapped here, I believe, somewhere, Badlands National Park. And it will pop in there. And then I just simply drag to change the order along the way. I also know from looking here that, of course, Yellowstone National Park's right up in this area. And even though I've been to Yellowstone in the past, I've never photographed a wolf. So I thought I'd take a chance. I'm in the area. Let's drive through there, spend a couple days, see if we can get lucky enough to photograph a wolf. I know the chances are low, but hey, Northern Yellowstone Park is a beautiful location, no matter whether I get the, the uh, luck of photographing a wolf or seeing some of the other sites again. So I add, simply add that destination in as well. And I've got Yellowstone Park already down here. So, sorry, let's add that in. And again, I can drag that to change the order and it will remap it for me. Then along the way, I also know that I wanna to go to um, the Icefield Parkway, which I'll just enter Jasper. And again, I can map that or rearrange the order there, and that'll take me through the Icefield Parkway. So you can see now, pretty good route made from my home in Indiana up to Badlands National Park is my first stop, and then I'll take another day drive into Yellowstone, spend some time there, up through the Icefield Parkway onto the Alaska Highway, which begins in Dawson Creek, then all the way into Alaska. 
Now my exact itinerary within Alaska is uh, in a, a little bit in flux right now. A hiking buddy of mine may join me in Alaska, and so I'm waiting for him to make the final decision of where, when he's going to fly in, where he would like to visit, and then I'll map out the rest of my travels within Alaska itself. Definitely Prudhoe Bay will be on there. Denali National Park will be on the route. And then it'll probably be down to Seward, Alaska as well. So those are options. And as I simply map it out, I continue to have a map updated that's got all of my current plans for, for travel. My return trip is not exactly known right now. Last time I took a, uh, the marine highway system, a, a ferry ride from Whittier, Alaska, down to Bellingham, Washington. But they haven't uh, created the routes for this summer yet. There's some information online that says those may be shut down for this summer as they're finding the resources, both boats that are uh, in dry dock right now and, and perhaps even uh, people to man the ships. Uh, so if that falls through, then my only option will be to drive back, which will probably be then down the Cassier Highway, which I haven't taken before. Then as you can see here, I have my itinerary on a spreadsheet that I use to input the information and calculate my travel times and my time at destination, uh, etc. So I simply have uh, listed on top the departure date, arrival date, travel time between locations, the time at the destination, any lodging information will go in here. And then the photo spots, I keep notes uh, updated as I uh, travel and research more. Obviously, this one's uh, left over from my last trip, so I'm going to pare it down a little bit. Then along the left side, I have shorter trips, my destinations, the, uh, the froms and the two. So Indy to Badlands, Badlands to North Yellowstone, and so forth. And as I mentioned before, my uh, trip back is still in flux of which one of these I will take. I then automate my spreadsheet so that uh, once I determine what my uh, departure date is, everything else will be updated automatically just with the formulas I have embedded. So if I leave on 7.5, for example, everything is updated automatically. Uh, change it back to where I was. All the updates are made throughout. Or if I change the time that I want to spend at a location, let's say I go from 2 to 4 um, here, the rest is updated as well to show the departure date and uh, uh, the arrival date. So I think that was a 2 right now. So it's a very easy, convenient way to uh, keep my itinerary updated. And as I said, I refine it uh, all the way up to the last day sometimes of, uh, of my trip. And there'll be times when I'm tired on the road as well, or there's a location I want to spend a little bit more time at. But I will uh, update my spreadsheet, take care of that. If I've got hard dates in there, such as picking up my friend at the airport, then I've got to pay attention to that to make sure that I'm on schedule or let him know he needs to stay in a hotel for a night before I arrive. I also share this with uh, friends and family at home so they know approximately where I'm at all the time. Uh, and I'll text them updates, of course, as I go as well. But they know my overall plan before I leave. So one thing you can see from this that I mentioned before, I don't think of uh, these type of trips as one long trip, though it is. Uh, it's, it's actually a sequence of smaller trips so that I can plan that accordingly. And it's a little bit uh, easier to bite off those small chunks than to try to do everything at once because the logistics could get to be a nightmare. I've also found that this approach helps with uh, the planning for what I need to pack. Uh, so for example, I don't need to pack clothes to last me 30 days. I need clothes that are going to last me about four days at a time. Because then at each of my stop points, that's where I can do laundry. That's when I can catch up on things, going to the grocery store, any resupplies that I would need. I can do them easiest at those locations where I plan to stop. So next I have my packing list on the same spreadsheet that contains my itinerary. I use a single packing list spreadsheet that has the list broken down by major categories. 
I keep notes of anything that uh, I specifically want to make sure of, uh, such as here for food and drinks, resupply at stopover locations, for clothing, make sure I have laundry supply since I will be stopping for laundry. Camera gear, note, make sure you keep your serial numbers written down and it's up to you whether you would like to have them insured or not. If you're taking any of your computer equipment and are going to rely on any of the tools on there for editing or video production, make sure that all your software tools are updated. And then finally, for security reasons, I use my AirTags strategically placed throughout my gear as uh, appropriate. Keep a final column whether my gear has been packed or not, and I will keep this updated until the last minute to make sure that I've got everything packed for the trip. So that's it. That's my packing list, and that's my overall process and tools that I use for my multi-day, uh, multi-location travel plans. If you'd like a copy of the tools, leave me a note in the comment and I'll send out uh, templates for you. And please like and subscribe so that you can follow along on my trip along the way. I will be doing social media postings on Instagram and on YouTube during the entire trip. So thanks, have a wonderful day. Don't forget, get outside.